and welcome to Into the Glories with me, Dr. Edith Davis, on 94.1 FM, Wave 94. So, spiritual believers, once again, we are in 2020, and of course, we are coming up against um, something that we, as a world, we've never had to deal with in our lifetime, and that is a pandemic. And of course, this is nothing that's going to catch God by surprise. So, once again, we are going to prevail as believers in Christ Jesus, and not only that, we're going to be used as instruments to help save the world as well. What a lot of people don't realize that hospitals were actually came from Christians. Christians were the ones that created the first hospitals, orphanages. This came from Christians. Um, almost uh, YMCA came from Christians. Salvation Army came from Christians, the universities, the Academy of Medicines came from Christians. OK, so we need to understand our history as the body of Christ, as the bride of Christ, the church. And it is not a building. It is a group of men and women and children who have sold out their selves, have given their lives over to Christ Jesus and been restored in a right relationship with Daddy, Abba, Father, you, hey, vai, hey. So, what does the Holy Spirit have to say about the coronavirus? What does the Holy Spirit have to say about our role in the body of Christ? I just got to taping my um, golden nugget, which basically deals with tithing. And uh, in this um, golden nugget, I revealed a secret. Basically, when we are born again, when we accept Christ Jesus as our Lord and Savior, when we accept his holy blood for the for the forgiveness of our sins, because the wages of sin is death. So Christ Jesus basically died for you and he died for me. So when we do that, we are restored back into sonship. We are restored back into daughtership. We are restored back into a right relationship with the father. And when we are restored back into a right relationship with father, we are given authority and power to have dominion over this earth. That means we have dominion over everything on this earth, including a virus, including the coronavirus. Well, Dr. Dr. Davis, what do you mean by that? I have authority over the virus. This is a voice activated world. This world was created with words. Words are powerful. Winston Churchill turned his whole country around and saved England and saved Europe with words. Words are powerful. Words can also get you what? Killed. You say the wrong what? Words to the wrong what? People. Right. So words are are nothing to be played with. And as a believer, as a born again believer, if we have the word of God in our mouths and we speak the word of God with faith, we truly believe what we're saying. And I'm not talking about belief in like in head knowledge. I'm talking about in our subconscious, in our hearts. We believe it will be done. Okay, so let's get down into this a little bit. So, I said in my um, uh, golden nugget, I said, this is a perfect example. And you cannot have authority and power if you're not under authority and power. What do I mean by that? I mean, you cannot be in rebellion under someone and thinking that you're going to operate in their authority and power. No CEO is going to let a, a rebellious vice president or, or, or director or anybody else have their power and authority because they're in rebellion. Well, let's take it to the garden. 
Adam and Eve had authority and power over the entire planet. There was voice activated. They had the same authority as God the Father. They had the same power as God the Father. They weren't God now. Don't get it twisted. They were not God. They were little G, little gods. But they were not the big God, the one and only true God, Yuhei But he had delegated. He had delegated his authority and power to Adam and Eve. And the, well, at that time, it wasn't Eve, it was the Adams, because Eve didn't get her name until after the fall. But anyway, so it was when he said Adam, he was speaking to female Adam and male Adam. OK, so the long and short of everything, they could speak. They didn't have to work. They just spoke and it happened or it came. That's why Adam was able to call the animals and whatever he called them, that's what they became. If he called you a horse, you became a horse. If he called you an elephant, you became an elephant. If he called you a snake, you became a snake. So, so this is the power of what? Words. So Dr. Dave, what's this got to do with my tithe and offerings? This is what it has to do with it. It is a command. It is not a request. God commands us to tithe. And this is not Moses. This is not Old Testament. This goes all the way back to the Garden of Eden. This goes all the way back to the very beginning of time. The covenant keeping God. God has required us to give 10% of everything that we have from the top before anybody else. This is to acknowledge that he is the source, the only source. Okay. Okay. So we acknowledge that he is the source. He is the what? Only source when we tithe. So when you obey God, and you tithe, you're under his authority. You are abiding in Christ Jesus. When you're under his authority and under his power, then you can be trusted to use his authority and power. This is why God doesn't tell us to pray for the sick. God tells us to heal the sick. Do you hear the difference here, believers? God doesn't tell us to pray for sick. God tells us to what? Heal the sick. God tells us to speak to cancer. God tells us to speak to the coronavirus. God tells us to speak to it. Command it to die, to leave people's bodies. It cannot touch us. It cannot touch our children if we believe and if we are under what? Authority. Under what? Power of God. So this is where the connection comes in about obedience, obedience. And God doesn't want you to believe him blindly. Satan wants you to believe him blindly, but God gives you evidence. God lets you. He wants you to be a thinker. He wants you to use your mind. Yes, he wants you to go to the doctors. Yes, he wants you to wash your hands. Yes, he wants you to practice social distancing. That's fine. That's okay with God. And God is all right with that. He wants you to walk in wisdom, but it will never trump the supernatural. There are situations, and this is a perfect example the Holy Spirit is bringing up to me now, is the situation where Jesus, after Jesus, took five loaves of bread and two fish and fed over 5,000. They estimated might have been up to maybe as many as 20,000 men, women, and children with what? Three loaves of bread and two fish that he got from a little boy. What happened there? What happened there was that God had been ministering and teaching for 72 hours straight, three hours straight. So these people were saturated with the word. The word contains faith. Did you know that? The word of God contains faith. God showed me a long time ago. The word of God was like a capsule. You broke it in half and light came out of it. The radiant power of God came out of it. And so when you're saturated with the word, when you sit under the word, you are full of what faith and the little boy realized that Jesus didn't have any lunch 
So guess what the little boy did? He took his lunch. He was hungry. That's a lunch his mommy made for him. He took everything he had and he gave it to the Savior, Christ Jesus. And what did Jesus do with it? First, he tested his apostles or disciples at that time to check to see where were they? Did they understand what was about to happen? I think he I think he first asked Andrew and then he asked also Philip. And they both had uh, the wrong answer. One of them looked at, oh, we got too many people. We can't feed all these people with this, with this three loaves of fish and these two, um, I mean, three loaves of bread and two fish. And then uh, the other one said, well, we don't have enough money to go buy enough for over 20, close to 20,000 people. Both wrong answers. What they should, the right answer was this. Jesus is here. Jesus, the one that walked on the water. Jesus, that raised people from the dead. Jesus, you are here. We know that there's not nothing is impossible for you. Uh, that was the what? Correct answer. Dun, 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 dun. Correct answer. But they didn't get there. So what did Jesus do? He demonstrated. He took the bread. Right. He lifted it up. To the Father. He took the fish. He lifted it up to the Father. He was in the position of sonship. He was the position as an ambassador from the kingdom of God. He was an ambassador from the kingdom of heaven. He had no lack. He had no poverty, no, no want, no sickness, no disease. Jesus, it was not a part of his life. It was not a part of him. And he lifted it up and he thanked the father for it. And the father, what? Multiplied it. And that little boy went back with tons of fish and bread because he gave to Jesus out of a heart of love and thanksgiving. And God was able to multiply it. And he fed close to 20,000 men, women and children. From three loaves of bread and two fish. Immediately after this, Jesus, remember, had been teaching the disciples for 72 hours straight. Then they had the miracle of the bread and the fish. And then he told them, I want you to get in the boat and go to the other side. I want you to get in the boat and go what? To the other side. They did not want to go. Why? Because they were fishermen. They knew about weather. They knew about the waters and they saw the storm coming. They resisted. They didn't want to go, but they were obedient. You got to give them credit for that. They were obedient and they went anyway because why? Jesus, their Lord and Savior, told them to. So they got in the boat and I believe this is the instance, I don't know, of this. oh yeah, this is the instance where Jesus walks on the water, I think. Or maybe this is the instance where he's in the boat, sleeping on, I don't know which instance this is. But the long and short of it is, when they got in that boat, the headwinds were pushing them backwards. The headwinds were pushing them backwards. Satan did not want them to get to the other side. Why? Because there was a demoniac waiting for them on the other side. There was a man that had over 2,000 demons in him waiting to be delivered on the other side. And once that man got delivered, that man was going to evangelize 10 cities in the area. 10 cities in the area. Gentile cities in the area. He was going to be a great evangelist and turn many people to Jesus and people were going to get saved. One of which was a woman with the issue of blood. Another story. So let's back it up. So the wind, the headwinds were pushing against them. But you got to give them credit. They kept on rowing. They kept on pushing because Jesus told them to what? Go to the other side. So these were fishermen. They knew what to do. They were bailing out the water. They were throwing doing whatever they, everything that they had learned since they were a little boy under their fathers to learn how to fish. They had been fishing on their own. They had their own company. They, they had it going on. They did everything possible in the what? Natural. They exhausted everything in the natural. And Jesus, Jesus, I think in this case, was in the what? 
Jesus was in the back of the boat sleeping, or maybe this is when he walked across the waters. But the long and short of it is they were crying out to God. And in the case when he was in the back of the boat, they said, don't you care? That we're going to die. These were no wimps. Peter wasn't a wimp. Andrew wasn't a wimp. John wasn't a wimp. These were men of thunder. These were men, manly men. And they were not crybabies. But they recognized that something was going on. In the one case, Jesus walked across the water, got in the boat, and the meat of the boat was translated to the other side. In the other case, Jesus stood up and spoke to the wind, spoke to the invisible wind, the invisible virus. Get it? He spoke to the invisible wind and commanded it to stop. And it did. And it was peaceful and they got to the other side. Okay, so what is this all about? This is about, yes, you do everything you can in the natural. But when the natural doesn't do the job, you go as believers, we can go to the what? Supernatural. We can go to the supernatural. We have that authority. We have that power. We can speak to cancer. We can speak to the coronavirus and command it to die. So what's going on now? The world can't do this. The world does not have the power of the Father. The world does not have the power of Christ Jesus. The world does not have the power of the Holy Spirit. The body of Christ has the power. So why is why are we having all this confusion? Because... The body of Christ, a lot of members in the body of Christ do not understand the authority and power that they have. They're busy. It's, yes, yes. God does say in his word, if my people will humble themselves and cry out to me, I will heal their land. Yes, God said that. But God tried to demonstrate to the disciples and to us when he spoke to the fig tree which was basically a counterfeit. This, this fig tree was saying that it had fruit, but it didn't. It was displaying all the indicators that it was a fruit-bearing fig tree. But when Jesus went to get the figs from the fig tree, there were no figs to be found. And Jesus cursed it because it was a counterfeit. This fig tree was per perpetrating, pretending to be something that it was not. It was not bearing fruit. When you abide in Christ Jesus, you should be bearing what? Fruit. So what happened? Jesus didn't cry to the father and say, father, uh, this fruit tree didn't have any fruit. I'm hungry. No, he spoke to the fruit tree. And guess what? The fig tree. And guess what? The fig tree spoke back to God. That's right. The fig tree spoke back to God. Probably gave some excuse of why I didn't have any fruit. But guess what? Jesus cursed it with his what? Words. He didn't get an axe and cut the fig tree down. He didn't get up and pull off the branches. He didn't do nothing. All he did was speak to the fig tree. Went on about his business. And when they came back, they saw that the fig tree was dead at the roots. This virus is invisible. This is a microorganism. Yes, you are to do everything. You are to walk in wisdom. You are to do wash your hands. You are to do the things that they say at the CDC. But you as Christians, you have a weapon that the world doesn't have. You have authority and power of God's word. And in Psalms 91, it clearly states that you can speak to the, to the virus and say, no plague can come now my dwelling. No noisy pestilence, which means deadly pestilence shall touch me or my household. We have the authority and we can stand in the gap for the world. The black plague, the black plague ran through the world several times. We've had incidences of the black plague and there is a case where the black plague was 
running rampant through Europe. And at that time, when you got the Black Plague, mortality was 95%, unlike the coronavirus, where mortality is around like a little under 2%. But if you had the Black Plague, back in those days, you had a 95% <laughs> chance of dying. That means only 5% of people who caught the Black Plague lived, okay? That's why Henry VIII locked himself up and didn't let nobody near him. So the long and short of it is, is this. We have dealt with plagues before, but there was a pastor in a small village. The black plague was coming towards his village. This pastor got the word of God out, went to the boundaries, the outskirts of his village and commanded the black plague. He didn't speak to God. He commanded. He spoke to the plague. He commanded the black plague to what? Die. To pass his village what? By. And guess what? His village was left un. Touch. Oh no, this is not the first time. How about in Japan when the when the tsunami was coming? The tsunami was coming. Once again, another what? Pastor in a position of authority, under authority. Guess what? He had the authority of God because he was in position. He was not in, in in rebellion, doing what he wants to do. He was about his father's business. And this Japanese, Japanese pastor stood up and commanded the tsunami to pass his town by. Oh, yes. John G. Lake. John G. Lake, basically up in Spokane, Washington, right? In the same area where I think it started, the, the coronavirus, in a nursing home up in the Washington area. So he basically had learned about authority and power and he took authority and power over another plague. A matter of fact, he trained other people on how to take authority and power, authority and power over sickness and disease. Right. And to the point where they closed down a hospital, an entire hospital was shut down because of the success of this ministry. And there was another plague. And, the, and what happened was in this particular case, um, they would have convulsions at the end and they would foam at the mouth and then they would die. And he was working with the patients. And one of the doctors said, isn't it great that we have the vaccine? That, you know, because, you know, we would be in bad shape if we were in this situation. Come to find that John G. Lake says, what vaccine? And he says, man, you're going to die. And then what they did was they took some of the foam off of the last dead patient. They had it on a slide that you can look at under the microscope. And John G. Lake, they put that foam on the slide under the microscope. He just touched the slide. And every organism died because no germ, no virus, no bacteria, no microorganism that was deadly, was trying to kill his body, could live. It had to die. So John G. Lake walking in, and guess what? Dr. Edith Gale Davis, no no, no coronavirus going to touch my body, no touch my household's body, or nobody that God has given me authority over is going to touch their bodies. They're not, I am speaking the word of God. No plague, no noisy pestilence should touch me nor my household. Thus says the Lord, Lord of God, Abba Father, you hey, by hey. Thus says the Lord God, Christ Jesus. Thus says the Lord God, Holy Spirit. Well, how can you do that, Dr. David? Because I am under authority. I am under the authority of my pastor. I'm under the authority of my chair. I'm under the authority of my dean. I'm under the authority of my provost. I'm under the authority of my president. I'm not, does that mean I agree with everything? No, I don't. But I know how to be under what? Authority. And if you are not under authority, you have no authority. You have no power. Spiritual believers and listeners, listen to what I'm saying. 
This is the time to rightly divide the word. If you closely look at Peter, when Peter and John lifted up the, the lame man who had been lame since birth, he had never walked. He was 40 something years old. This is at the, the, um, the beautiful gate, right? The gold and silver, the gate beautiful, right? They pulled up, they said silver. He didn't pray over the man. Peter took his hand and pulled him up and said, silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have I give to you. Rise up and walk in the name of Jesus. Guess what? This man had no muscles, but he leaped and walked. So supernaturally, his muscles were restored and rebuilt and the bones were restored and rebuilt. And this man walked. He did not pray over the man. He decreed and declared with the authority and power that Christ Jesus had given him and John and the rest of the, uh, the apostles. You speak to the problem. You give thanks and praise to the father. Daddy God, you hey, vai, hey. You give thanks and praise to the Son, Lord God Christ Jesus. You give thanks and praise to the Lord God Holy Spirit. And you say, you speak to the, to the problem and you say to God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, thank you because it's already done. Jesus did it all 2,000 years ago. Coronavirus was defeated 2,000 years ago. Now, it's about you receiving it. This is why the word of God says, my people perish for lack of knowledge. It's just like having a million dollars in the bank account and you don't know it. And you die a pauper. You die in poverty because you didn't know you had a million dollars. It's the same thing with this. You got to rightly divide the word. You have to understand that you have the authority. You have the power to shut down sickness and disease. You have the authority. You have the power to shut down lack and poverty. You got the power and authority, but you better be under authority. Because let me tell you about these three, um, maybe the, the sons of Sceva. They were these Jewish um, rabbis and they had been watching Paul perform miracles. Well, Paul spent three years in the desert with Jesus as Jesus prepared him for his ministry, right? Which was to preach and teach to the Gentiles. So Paul had an intimate relationship with Jesus. Okay. He knew Yada Jesus, right? He loved Jesus. Jesus came to him in and on the road to Damascus, knocked him on his backside. He was blind for three days. Then Jesus sent his servant Ananias to pray over him. And, and guess what? Paul, the scale from his eyes fell off and he could see. Not only could he see physically, but he could see spiritually. Now, the errors of his ways, because he was a persecutor of the Christian. Paul had was killed, had killed Christians. He was there holding the coat of the people when the first martyr for Christians was stoned to death, Stephen. But God turned him around and turned that terrorist into an apostle. Okay? So, here we go. So, we have Paul and these sons of Sceva decided that they wanted to do the same thing that Paul and and Jesus did, right? Which was, we have the authority to cast out demons. Did y'all know that? We could actually multiply the food, food too. Marilyn Hickey, she's done it. Where they had didn't have enough lunches. and They only had lunches for like 3,000 people. And they ended up having lunch for 5,000 people. All they did was pray over it and multiply. People have actually, in supernatural ways, multiplied offering money. Marilyn Hickey did that too. Money was, the offering was not enough. They prayed over it. The offering multiplied. They prayed over it. Multiplied. So matter, matter is under the domain of God. <laughs> Time, space, and matter. But anyway, back to the sons of Sceva. So here we go. So these, these young rabbis, they want to be like Paul. They want to cast out demons. So they go in there to this man who is demon-possessed. 
and they command them. They say, we command you. We adjure you in the name of Paul, um, who is, who's under Jesus. And we command you to come out. And guess what? The, the demons spoke back to him. They said, wait a minute, Paul, we know. And Jesus, we know. But who are what? Who are you? They tore that man up. That man left that, that house butt naked, bleeding. They tore him up. What my point is this. Develop your relationship with God. It's okay that you're starting from ground zero. God will work with you, but you need to become a mature Christian. Mature Christians are not run by their emotions. They don't do what they feel like doing. They do what God requests them to do. Even Jesus Christ, when he went to the Garden of Gethsemane, he didn't want to drink that bitter cup. He didn't want to be crucified. He didn't want to be scourged and whipped and spat upon and humiliated. He didn't want it. But he went into the garden and he prayed not once, not twice, but three times. So prayer does change you. And when, the, when he got to praying the third time, he was fortified. He, his will was in alignment with the Father's will. And he humbly submitted himself to God's will and was crucified. He even kept covenant with Judas. That's right. Jesus didn't even break the covenant with Judas. When Judas came up to kiss him, kiss, betraying him with a kiss, Jesus responded, friend, friend, to the man that betrayed him and put him in harm's way to be crucified and killed. Okay? So, spiritual believers and listeners, do Psalms 91. Keep speaking Psalms 91. Let it get into your spirit. Let it get into your soul. Let your mind be transformed. And eventually, you will be in authority and power. You will have the what? The anointing. You will be shifting into the glory zone. Spiritual believers, I don't want to end this broadcast without ending it with Romans 10, 9. If you believe in your heart that Christ Jesus died, buried, and was raised from the dead, and you accept him as your Lord and Savior, you accept his blood for the forgiveness of your sins, you are, you are saved. Thank you for once again joining me on Into the Glory Zone on 94.1 FM, Wave 94.